Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, the new video. I'm in my new apartment, very excited for 2024. And I got a lot of requests, uh, you know, when I made the Spring Boot tutorial to make videos on Kafka and uh, more advanced uh, content around Spring Boot, Kafka and, uh, you know, all of these other, other tools. So we're going to do that and I'm going to focus uh, on that for this year as well, uh, bring you some nice uh, content that you can apply more hands-on, contribute to open source projects. So you know my first open source contribution was in a Java project. So I'm very excited for this video. We're going to learn about Kafka introductory video and we'll follow up this video with other, other, other videos as well. So in this video, obviously, it, it, would, it wouldn't be a nice video without a more uh, hands-on approach. So obviously, we'll be doing a hands-on tutorial as well and uh, using cloud services as well. So you can actually see how people are using it in the real world, Kafka. And uh, we're going to be using Ivan. So if you want to check out the links in the description below, you know, when we did the Spring Boot tutorial, people loved it uh, when I used it and got a lot of nice feedback. So why I'm recommending that is because uh, you get uh, some free credits as well. If you check out the, you know, sign up using the link in the description below. And the best part is you don't have to add a credit card. You can just sign up and get started with it and have some free credits to run, um, you know, your uh, on your Ivan platform. So do check out the links in the description below and uh, let's get started. So let's talk about uh, what is Apache Kafka, right? So let's take a scenario here over here. Imagine that uh, you're going to your uh, hometown or somewhere, right? You're going to another state and you're at a very busy train station and trains. In this example, we will take the trains. Let's say we call these, uh, we can relate the trains to messages, right? So the trains are constantly like arriving and departing from the platforms. Okay. And these trains are carrying passengers. Now we can relate passengers to what? Data. And they are carrying the passengers to various destinations. Okay. That's what happens in the real world. We all know that. We have all been, I assume, to the train station. So this is much like Apache Kafka. A train station is like Apache Kafka. It's powerful and... Uh, you know, what is Apache Kafka? It's an open source stream processing software platform. That's basically what Apache Kafka is. It's a train station, like a train station, right? Um, not quite, not quite literally, but I'll explain to you in a bit more. But uh, when we talk about Kafka, it is designed to handle real time data feeds. So it's like a messaging system that effectively produces um, the, the, what, what do you call it? The, well, not produces, processes and moves the data from one point to another. Okay. Just like it, the train is moving the passengers. Okay. And it is unique because it's capable of handling a very vast amount of data, making it like a go-to choice for many companies that are dealing with large scale data operations. Okay, Kunal, this is cool. Apache Kafka, let's say it's a, it's a tool or whatever you want to call it. Right, it's an open source um, stream processing software that basically handles all the uh, data feeds that we have from one point, transfers from uh, one point to another point. Not a problem. So let's say you have a live TV broadcast, you're video conferencing, you're playing a game, online multiplayer games. Right. So we understand this very simple train example. All, all, all cool. Okay. Question is why do we use Kafka? That's the question number two. So the reason number one is it provides a very high throughput. So Kafka can handle a large amount of uh, a large volume of uh, messages like uh, highways is, you know, for example, a highway is designed to accommodate a lot of traffic without any congestion. So it provides high throughput. When you talk about the next point, which is scalability. So it can easily grow with your needs. I gave you the train example. So think of it as a modular train system. So where you can add in more trains, uh, without overhauling the entire infrastructure. Reason number three why we use Apache Kafka is fault tolerance. So Kafka is um, like, you know, a very well designed uh, road network that provides uh, multiple paths. So if one of the path is blocked, so the train traffic or whatever you want to call it will reroute automatically ensuring that the data flow is not interrupted. All right, cool. Now let's talk a bit more about the components of Kafka, some terminologies. I'll obviously try to relate this in a real world example as well. So let's take an example of a post office. Okay. So in the post office, obviously the first thing is the people are sending the letters. 
okay me or you anyone who was just going to the post office or the post box sending the letter in this terminology in terms of kafka these are known as producers so a kafka producer is like people who are sending the letters to a post office now the next terminology very important which is a kafka cluster so kafka cluster is the post office itself which is managing all the flow of the letters okay point number 3 terminology number 3 in kafka is a consumer so consumer is uh, like the recipient of the letters who will get the letter okay those are the consumers in kafka and topics that is also a kafka terminology are the different categories so for example of the mail that you are sending for example document bills international mail so on and so forth and in this system the letters which is what we are representing the data with are continuously sent and received sorted and these are directed to the right people um and these people we can term as applications okay effectively and re reliably so these are some of the components of kafka we'll obviously take a look at it as well uh, in a real world example so uh in a let's say if we talk about an e-commerce platform right so when you place an order on a e-commerce on an e-commerce website so many things happen in the background right so what happens you order uh you place your service uh, place your order this is you ordering the service then there's a kafka topic which is basically a dedicated channel for order processing then the inventory service which is if it checks if the item is in the stock or not this is for the consumer so order service is what this is when you place your order which is the kafka producer kafka topic is the dedicated channel for the processing of that order the inventory service the e-commerce website will check whether the item is on stock or not this is the consumer the shipping service which arranges for the delivery this is also the kafka consumer notification service which sends you the order confirmation email and everything also consumer so each of these in your know, services interact through kafka and these ensure real time processing and reliability and efficiency and uh, i have been talking for a bit now i think uh, it will make uh, click to you much more uh, nicely when we do a hands on demo okay so let's try to see apache kafka using ivan very simple to use free for you to get started no credit card required you will get extra credits as well when you check out the links in the description below and when we do more real world projects more complex projects in when we do let's say an apache kafka course or a spring boot course ivan will play a very crucial role because you know it's sort of like built for that for real world applications so let's take a look at a demo All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a project, and uh, since we're talking about data streams, we need say let's say lots of data. We need lots of data that we need to send to Kafka, and then Kafka will process it. Where do we get this lots of data? Not just for the sake of this tutorial, but there may be any other case and any other example in which you might want a lot of data. Okay, just for testing purposes or whatever. So let's make a mini project that is going to help you solve this problem. There's a nice library in Python called Faker that we can use to. you know generate fake data let's say you already have a schema you need to generate a lot of fake data so we're going to use that and uh, we're going to use kafka you know to process uh, process that data as well and uh, that's what we're going to do so let's get started first things first we need to set up our kafka uh, cluster online uh, that you can do on even uh, pretty easily so check out the links in the description below and you'll get some free credits as well that you can play around with it and the best part is you don't have to add a credit card when you're getting started so you can just get started uh, like this okay so i am here in my uh, even console as you can see on the on the screen i'm going to click on create a new service and when i click on create a new service here you can see there are a bunch of services so i'm going to select apache kafka now once i select apache kafka you know we can also select uh, our version you can select the cloud providers or whatever and uh, i mean europe i can select uh, you know uh, germany or whatever it is giving me that's fine england is fine i live in i live in london and uh, you can select the service plan so startup business and uh, you know premium whatever but it's uh, it's a free trial um, because you get uh, lots of credits uh, as well and um, you can give this uh, service a name also so i will say kafka demo should be fine and let me see if there's anything else needed nope i can select the versions but i'll just do the one that is uh, default for now 
create service and start trial. That's it. That's how easy it was to set up Kafka um, on the on I1. Now here you can see that uh, the current uh, deployment status. As you can see it's uh, being building, so it will show running in a while, and you can connect as well. Uh, this is something we'll be needing uh, next, and obviously we'll be we'll be using Python. Uh, we'll be making use of all of these. Uh, service uh, credentials as well and um, here you can see there is the service URI, host, port, access key, access certificate, CA certificate as well. So here basically we will save the access key which is this one, we just click on show. I can just copy it, right um, and then the access certificate as well, we are going to store that in a file as well. And the CA certificate as well, we will store that in a file as well. So let me just show store this. I'm going to download this. I'm going to download this and I'm going to download this. So this access key, you have to save it as service.key file. The service.cert file is the access certificate. And the CA certificate you have to save as ca.pem. So save that, save that in your in your file. Now by default, you know, when we talk about Kafka producers, they can push data only on some of the pre-created topics and in order to allow topics to be created uh, on the fly while you're pushing the first, uh, let's say, uh, some records or whatever, you have to enable um, Kafka um, auto-create topics. So if I go in my console, if I just, uh, let's say, go to, go to next, create a topic, I can do this later. Let's say I just skip the step for now. Okay, and integrations and connections, I'll just do finish setup, that's fine. Uh, overview, I get all my integrations, uh, sorry, all my service credentials and everything. Uh, here, if I go in my overview, and in the overview, I check out down in advanced, there should be here somewhere. Configurations are here. Mm. Here we go, advanced configurations. And here we're going to click on the configure option. Okay, so add configuration. There we go. Now here we can actually search for Kafka or auto create. Kafka dot auto create topics enabled. This is the one. I have to enable that. How simple was that? So that's why we're doing it, you know, um, because by default it's not on. So when we have to allow all the, you know, the topics uh, to be created on the fly when you're pushing the records, that's why this uh, field has to be enabled. And I think we also have to enable, um, the Kafka REST API, which is known as, I'm going to save this, the Kara, uh, Kara base. And that also you can do in the, if I go in the overview tab and Kara place, done. Enable REST confirmation, done. Okay, so this is basically you know, uh, going to allow us to check that our producers, uh, check our producer, and uh, it's going to do that by reviewing that the, the records that we push to the AVEN console that you can find in the topics tab later on. Okay, sounds good. Um, cool. So we're going we're gonna to do that, not a problem. And uh, yeah, let's move forward. Okay, so here in my uh, VS Code project, I'm going to set up my 
Python client. So you can use the Kafka Python client to build your producer. And all you need to do is you need to do pip install Kafka Python. Oh, my spelling mistake, not a problem. While that is happening, I'm going to create a main.py file. And this is very simple. What I'm going to do in the main.py file is, okay, so in the main.py file, I'm just going to copy this paste and uh, copy this, uh, you know, copy paste this code. I'm not going to write it the entire thing because, uh, you know, to save time, be more concise in the tutorial. But I'm going to explain, obviously, you know, uh, what this does. Um, so we have just imported some, uh, some dependencies and set some correct uh, parameters, like we have the bootstrap server, we have the SSL uh, CA file, the cert file, the key file, which all refers to the uh, connection URI and the three certificate files that were that were mentioned, um, you know, over here, these ones, right? So that's basically what it is. You have to save these files as this name that we just downloaded and I mentioned this already, right? And you can also check uh, all the other parameters and everything available in the um, Ivan documentation and all sorts of things. Okay. And uh, one more thing I want to mention is that when we push, uh, you know, push this properly to Kafka, we also need to transform them into string and we have to encode those in ASCII. That is what this, uh, you know, line is, uh, this Lambda function is doing. So we are ready to push our first message to Kafka. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm just going to call this, um, you know, um, going to call the producer dot send uh, method or function, whatever you want to call it function. And uh, I'm going to do the, I'm going to also call the flush uh, function. So this basically, this command, uh, the flush is uh, blocking the code from executing until all the async uh, messages are sent. So if I just run this now, okay, so here I have my terminal and we're doing a pizza delivery data. So fake data for pizza delivery in my current folder, which is this one. I have, um, it's fine. Um, I have all my files. So I have these three files that I just downloaded and I have this URI that I got from uh, my overview tab in the connection service URI, not a problem. And I'm going to run this uh, file. Let's see what we get. Okay. No errors. Looks good. So what happened is that uh, if we go into our URL, if I go into my topics, here we go. I see a topic has been created. A test topic has been created. Okay. Default configuration, all the things you can see over here. Cool. So we did using Python and uh, it seems to be working so far. So we'll be doing step by step. Let's follow it step by step. All right. One more thing we can do is we can uh, go to the this topic and if I go to messages and if I select the format as JSON fetch messages Hello world. Yay. So cool. So we have successfully integrated this. All right. Very exciting. Let's move forward. So far, so good. Okay. Now let's get back to business here. Uh, we're creating fake data for like, um, you know, a pizza delivery chain. So we want to push our orders. Let's say in a real world, I will push all my orders. Let's say I'm getting so many orders. Uh, Domino's or Pizza Hut or whatever, Papa Jones, uh, we're going to push it to Apache Kafka. Okay, so as a pizza owner, you will get all the calls and you will note down the client's name and the address and the phone number and all sorts of things. So we're going to mimic this information. We're going to install, uh, what are we going to install? We're going to install Faker. We're going to install Faker. So this will allow me to get fake data. All right. That is done. Cool. If I create a new file or if I can just, I can just write it over here. Uh, I can say 
from faker import or I can just create a new file for you just to show you fake.py okay so I can say from faker import faker and gonna call this uh, class uh, constructor create an object and then I'm gonna create a message let's say for the pizza delivery we have a name fake name similarly we have address fake address similarly we have phone fake phone number this is a very useful uh, you know thing for you if you want to create fake data for testing purposes or whatever and uh, you know you don't want to worry about um, you don't want to worry about um, you know where to get the data or whatever so if I just have a, you know a simple file and I just run this so fake.py okay random fake data I got Martha Keller address random fake now I'm getting another fake another fake another fake another fake fake data okay sounds good cool so now our basic fake data is ready we have the structure of the data database as well we are getting the name and address and the phone number and uh, cool nice and here we have let's say we have name address phone number but you can have other things as well and uh, even though we have uh, the name and address and phone number it doesn't really tell you anything about the pizza business okay so for example we need pizzas and, as well like pizzas and stuff so uh, we can create a, a pizza generator and we can create like a custom data provider and uh, we have few options for pizzas let's say margarita pepperoni um, kadhai pani pizza if you from domino's india that i really miss um, so on and so forth right so what i'm going to do here is uh, gonna create a file right I'm gonna say new file let's say pizza producer.py I'm gonna copy this so you have pepperoni salami margarita all sorts of pizzas that you have created your own custom type now in the main I can actually um, just import the pizza provider so I can say from pizza producer import pizza provider okay and here I can say or actually I can do it here and I can remove this and now I can just say fake dot add fake dot add provider pizza provider and I can give it a range for i in range 0 till 10 print fake dot pizza underscore name there we go all right so you can add um, you know all sorts of things and um, yeah do getting like a bunch of bunch of pizzas over here now we have our building blocks we can create an order so for each call we are going to note down everyone every time a person calls us we'll note down their name address phone number and they can order one to ten pizzas and for every pizza they can also order additional toppings and uh, we're going to create fake orders and uh, a function that will randomly generate order id and uh, yeah let's see how we can do that so i'm not going to write the entire code line by line but i'm just going to show you and explain it to you okay the basic stuff is done but uh, what i'm going to do now is we're going to elevate it a bit further so that you can explore yourself because uh, let's admit it it's not a tutorial for python we're going to explain how you know 
Ivan works and Kafka works. So you can figure out this, um, you know, the other code yourself, assuming you already know Python. But the good thing is that you can also run this same lab on uh, Gitpod, which I believe is uh, pretty cool. And uh, all you have to do is you have to set the uh, variables that I already showed you over here. If you go in your overview tab, here you can find all the all the variables. So let's just, uh, you know, do that. And uh, here if I just go to my preview, so we're going to follow what they say and it's going to be pretty simple. But by the way, you can also explore these uh, code samples, uh, you know, yourself. Here you can say even user login, token, and just follow these, just going to follow these steps and just going to create my, um, you know, um, just link my Ivan account. Okay, by the way, you can also run the same command on your local system. So I showed you from scratch in the initial part of this demo, uh, connecting the Ivan Kafka with, uh, you know, your local repository, uh, the Python uh, client, which is a simple hello world application. And then there's a, you know, deeper dive into it using Faker uh, library that you can use. So for example, if I just run this command, you can see that it's going to generate, you know, fake pizza and it's going to give these fake orders to Kafka. If I just go to topics, if I go to pizza orders and I go to messages I search in the form of JSON and I fetch, there you go. All the fake data that we are sending. So this is what is happening. I am sending fake data to Kafka from my computer, so Faker.js is, uh, Faker, uh, the Python one is um, sending this fake data, fake orders, as you can see, it's keeping on sending, keep on sending. And Kafka stream here is uh, happily taking these messages. Okay, sounds good, cool, cool. Fetch messages, you will see there will be more now, more than 23, 64 messages, okay. so. Ideally, the motive of this video was to explain to you about what Kafka is. Don't worry too much about these uh, complex code samples because we haven't started the main course yet. So if you want, uh, I can do a dedicated course where we can build such projects from scratch because I want it to be wary of everyone's time and uh, you know not bombard you with all the information. So we just did a little small demo and then I just showed you some boilerplate code. But uh, I'm happy to do like a dedicated video and uh, I think if by this video you were able to understand what is Kafka, how easy it is to work with Ivan, then you know it was a huge success. And uh, if you want to deep dive, learn more, there are some nice Ivan guides you can check out. They do some amazing workshops as well. And you can sign up to the link with the link in the description below where you'll get a lot of, uh, you know, you'll get some nice uh, free credits to try out Ivan as well. And uh, if you're interested uh, for any specific topic, let me know if you want me to create a video on. I know I'm getting so much requests for Spring Boot. Uh, and, and Kafka there was as well. So I tried to explain what Kafka is in simple terms in this video. But yeah, any dedicated topic you want me to explain, or maybe you need a dedicated Kafka bootcamp, you know, like a 30 video long hands-on bootcamp, just like the DSA one. Just let me know in the comment section below and we can make that happen. All right, so that was about it. Apache Kafka, you know, it's, uh, it's like the central nervous system of data processing for many companies, you can say that, uh, you know, just such a great tool, you know, it's the, the ability, you know, for example, to high, uh, to handle the high volumes of data in real time with reliability and scalability makes it an indispensable in the world uh, of uh, big data and real time uh, analytics. And uh, whether it's for tracking your uh, you know, user activity on the website or processing financial transactions, or let's say you wanna work with the uh, IoT devices data, Kafka can play a crucial role in making sure that the right data gets to the right place at the right time. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section below. If you want, uh, if you have, let's say a request for another future videos or let's say a dedicated course, let me know in the comment section video uh, of this video because uh, you know it's being used in so many open source projects as well. And um, you know it being open source as well. So. Uh, sooner or later you will encounter Kafka somewhere in your in your journey um, or Spring Boot or other if you're working with Java you will encounter these tools so it's important that we you know talk about these being you know uh, an advocate for like I did the Java 
boot camp and playlist so now people are like okay this is fine but how do you apply it in the real world when we look at the bigger projects these use so many other tools like kafka like spring boot so yeah any questions any suggestions if you need to if you need a dedicated hands on course really long one just like i did the dsa one so let me know and uh, yeah check out ivan the link in the description below because if you sign up using that link you get some free credits so shout out to them for giving free credits to the community and i'll see you in the next one have a great day bye